Hi there, welcome back. This is Blue Stocking Broad, or Kim, you can call me. I'll answer to either one. Um, but thank you for choosing my video. Um, this will be a series of videos that I am planning talking about a subject I know pretty well, um, and that is witchcraft, especially modern day witchcraft, the, the where we now and what came before, and dispelling some myths, maybe correcting some things, also calling myself out on some ways I have practiced my craft. This is just a way for, if you're curious, here you go. Um, but this one specifically, I'm going to be talking about the Divine Feminine. So as what started as a response to our masculine world, especially this is the 1960s, 1970s, I'm not going way back here, I'm talking about the Divine Feminine as we know it now and the language that we use now. And is it necessary or not still? Um, I argue not. Um, but it started out as a response to the kind of heavily masculine, masculinated world um, with the start of capitalism. Um, you know, there was a lot of shifting going on. Uh, women wanted more agency in the workplace. They wanted to be able to get the proper education. This was all coming to a head during the ERA, during abortion rights, all of those things. And what emerged from that landscape um, was the goddess movement is what it's called in reference to the 1960s and 70s, which really championed the divine feminine aspect of a biologically gendered woman. So what is the divine feminine? The Divine Feminine refers to the energy that exists within and without us that is softer, nurturing, intuitive, and empowered. So what is masculine energy? Um, from my studies and from what I've been taught, masculine energy is the action-oriented, driven, intelligent, capable mentality of like putting thought, in, putting thought into action, somebody inspired to be a leader, to take on a project or anything, that is what is typically considered masculine, um, the active bit. And the feminine energy aspect is being in the receiver mode, being able to comfort, provide aid, provide care, provide nurturing. That is what is considered classically the feminine energy. Also, the kind of psychic, intuitive kind of label gets put in here as well, especially when it comes to witchcraft. Um, but you know, mommy, daddy. So the 1960s and 70s, there was the movement called the goddess movement. And yes, sounds liberating, sounds affirming, validating, but there was, there was a, a not a dark side, but a flip side that we didn't pay attention to at the time, but it wasn't really on the forefront of our minds. We were just, this is during the time of like the ERA movement, you know, Roe v. Wade, LGBTQ rights, like this was all happening and it was coming to a head. Um, and so where did women belong in this? Where could kind of traditional women get celebrated and like get looked at as well. Um, and this is just what I think, like maybe <laughs> wanting to kind of have a moment in the sun with their gender could have been the intention. And like I said, I don't think that the divine feminine movement or goddess movement was damaging in its inception, but as the years roll on, people are still propping these ideals up and it's excluding huge amounts of our community. So this is, this is, again, the intentions may have been good, but we're gonna look at the, the tainting and the smudging of it and just the liberties that they take with this. 
I will also talk about this movement growing on TikTok amongst evangelical Christian girls and women specifically. Um, there's a there's a there's a whole thing. I didn't know that this was like really big on TikTok. <laughs> but um, so yes, yeah, so it sounds as though we're giving women a lot of validation and encouragement and and yes it's beautiful be, to be a woman you know it's not just a man's world it's a woman's world too you know that's all valid and very much we and i speak as a a cis het woman like yes from my perspective i can see if i lived during that time this movement would really call to me i was very much a traditional i stayed home with my three kids i mean didn't have a religious upbringing really but I was that I was that woman so I could see how in the 70s this could be revolutionary <laughs> but it's all just a uh, posturing maybe performative it's it's you know celebrating you as a woman but also celebrating that cooking and cleaning is a woman's job that kind of vibe David Vo is a professor of social sciences at University College London, co-authored a paper in 2011 called The Emergence of Conspirituality. Women who are trying to free themselves from conventional values, expectations, and religion that are drawn to alternative spirituality. Unfortunate, a lot of the rhetoric around self and oneness is esoteric mumbo jumbo designed to make them feel empowered without actually being in positions of power. Because with the divine feminine really being so sl closely related to nature, um, there becomes this thing of natural order and like natural intention, natural purpose, like kind of God or spirit made you a man, God or spirit made you a woman, you know, don't think of what you lack, think of what you have. And again, it's like, be grateful of what you have. And going with the natural purpose or natural order of things, one thing that the divine feminine God, goddess movement really held up was motherhood and fertility. Um, it was all about, you know, being in your earth goddess energy, growing the baby in your womb, you know, you're the maiden mother crone, and these are all the phases of life that a woman goes through, and we need to celebrate each phase of it. Sounds harmless, but if you are constantly pushing this thing that is biological and physiological, as a type of exceptionalism is bullshit. I don't need to be propped up on a pedestal because I've given birth to three children. You know, yeah, you know, a congrats here and there. Sure, that's normal. Compliment my baby, wonderful. But this sort of pressure that gets wrapped up in with um, celebrate your periods, you know, understand that that's just you know, you responding to nature and that's just your next course and everything transitions, nothing stays the same. Let's celebrate evolution and changing. Sure, but I'm someone who struggled with bad periods most of her teenage, well into current life, and I don't want to celebrate it. In fact, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to howl at the moon. I don't want to get together with my other moon sisters and like we all put our blood together and fertilize a garden. No. Not saying that a lot. Of, I don't know. There might be people that do that now. I don't know. But from books and materials I've read and things I've studied, there's a lot of the lean into the blood kind of thing. Some people just can't handle it. And it's Again, you have a lot of trauma involved with the gender binary and some people just don't fit into a binary. But celebrate what the goddess, what the feminine can do. You can grow a baby. I mean, let's not, there's also birth trauma. There's pregnancy trauma. I hated being pregnant, absolutely hated it. I was sick the whole time. I was tired the whole time. You know, the three births I did 
have um, with children, I did have one miscarriage, but the births I did have were traumatic, bad pain, you know, they were induced. It was, it was just a, I mean, I have healthy children now, but in the fix of it, it's, it's not that way. We're not all giving birth in the woods. I mean, some of us are, but we're not all doing that to maintain our earthly goddess aspect. <laughs> so, and again, it just kind of reinforces the traditional man woman role of, you know, just stay at home and have the babies. That is one way that you women can support capitalism is give birth to happy, healthy babies, give them an organic diet, breastfeed them till they're 10, I don't know, um, and bring on a new generation of workers. There's that aspect. I don't think we can ignore that. You wanna just breed more people into the population so they'll work and pay for your retirement maybe? I don't know, just throwing that out there. Masculine enters the picture, we head into the territory of gender essentialism. Any form of gender essentialism ends up reinforcing traditional stereotypes, David says. The divine feminine is just another way of putting women up on a pedestal and keeping them away from work that matters. And let's not forget the cultural appropriation part of this practice or path or whatever you want to call it and the goddess movement definitely uh made it okay and i think that's where we have to kind of turn off the spigot and reevaluate things and understand that like these sort of modern witchcrafty beliefs just co-op so much from other religions and practices and they're just taken and applied in this sort of 21st century or 20th century lens to well you know if you're wanting to know more about you know how to connect with your your fire energy freya the nordic goddess does this and she's also the champion of artists and things like that that's one thing that's kind of celtic and that's that's open but more of a you know hindu deities um you know afro-caribbean deities like there's so much stuff co-opted from those belief systems that i have found that have been authored by white women <laughs> who have been given special access to this sort of knowledge. And again, it plays into the white exceptionalism myth. You're allowed into this secret ritual or you are given knowledge of this sacred belief. And then you write a book about it and tons of white women buy it and you profit everything, but that person that showed you the ritual gets no benefit from it. So that's a problem with uh, the divine feminine concept and the belief system and just taking something that you think can suit you is one thing. You know, like I said, I'm not going to tell you how to practice. If you practice spiritually, if you're a witch, if you're Reiki or healer, I'm not telling you how to do it. Your faith is your business. But I do believe that that stuff should be kept close to the chest and not give away too much. Um, because Again, it makes that specialness, you know, again, it's the superiority. I've been let in because I really understand my purpose as a divine feminine being. I got it. So therefore, I have access to these goddesses, you know, Isis, Kali, um, Shakti, all of these things that are based in a religious section and we take it and co-opt it for some new agey, I don't know, meditation, Mount Shasta retreat. I don't know. Just seems wrong. And the intentional peoples that started it or that it came from get no benefit. So therefore it's exploitative. Sorry. <laughs> Article by Chloe Bruyere Dawson for BowieCreators.com says it is a patchwork of different systems or belief practices from many different cultures, yet those cultures are rarely acknowledged and a lot of times incorrectly. 
Those spiritual movements are taking mythology and rituals out of their cultural context without concern for the population that originated them. It is blatant cultural appropriation and thus reinforces domination systems that feminist movements are supposed to fight against. And now we get to what the kids are doing on the TikTok, on the toxic talk. <laughs> it's not all toxic, but this bit is. Um, the Divine Feminine has taken on a new meeting and new energy within the fundamentalist evangelical Christian movement. Which, I mean, they'll do anything to it. Anything. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> Jesus was a witch. I do believe that. Sorry. Um, but I don't believe everybody is a witch. <laughs> but Jesus, I there's there's evidence for that if the Bible is real. <laughs> the yeah. <laughs> so evangelizing the divine feminine principle of traditional gendered roles is what ha what is happening, and it's within a heteronormative marriage of one man, one woman, and um, they're basically twisting this well i don't know if it's twisting it's applying it into heteronormative marriages which 40 50 years ago there was a lot of that so again it's like they've taken this and they can apply it th through this framework um and still seem kind of modern and progressive possibly i don't know but maybe it's like a gateway thing like maybe they start talking about that and then all of a sudden you're in the fold. I don't know. But um, this doesn't just talk about this. Is, the feminine energy, what they're trying to say is, is being a dutiful wife, being a committed wife, being a happy wife, cooking dinner for husband, having the baby, staying at home, trad wife, right? And I'm not knocking trad wives. If it's consensual, you knock yourself out. But engineering this to be something that you're lacking is a problem um because again it also is it's like so exclusionary we all understand that we have masculine energy and feminine energy and i my final notes i will say that we got to change the terms we got to change the language so you have to be in your enhanced, superior, feminine mode of receiving, of being submissive, of just offering nurturing and comfort and things like that. And then the male is the going to work, bring home a check, feed my children, put food on the table, bills are paid, all of that. So you have this very like realistic capitalist way of looking at the divine feminine and divine masculine. I keep saying divine feminine because that's more of the movement, but it encapsulates, they talk about divine masculine as well. Um, but we don't need to call these terms, we don't need to gender them, honestly. Uh, we're better than that and we've moved on from that. On TikTok alone, the hashtag Divine Feminine has garnered 1 billion views, and its counterpart, Divine Feminine, has over 630 million views. The majority of these videos under these hashtags were made by women, and they routinely stress the importance of upholding feminine traits that promise to help get you the dream job, relationship, or money that you desire. And just think about this. Um, the way the algorithms work on TikTok, you know, you're maybe one or two likes away from getting onto a certain type of TikTok and you can't get out. Um, so there is very much a pipeline for this. Um, so just be aware. Um, if you start seeing videos about women celebrating their kings and all of that, not saying you can't follow them, just take a second look maybe. Um, I think everything can start out with good intentions that we regular folks do. Um, but again, it gets passed along and gets, it's like a game of telephone. It changes and changes and changes the more it's given energy. So, um, and I didn't know this, but apparently piece of shit Andrew Tate would champion this sort of 
high value women and high value men idea that you can easily say he took from this sort of principle. And I find it interesting, again, it plays into that capitalism aspect of value. The high value women, they're confident, they're ambitious, they know how to take care of their man, you know, and, and the high value man. Apparently, like, don't take selfies, like cut off your access to women and, you know, don't, don't let them, don't let those temptresses get in the way. Like, I mean, Andrew fucking Tate, okay? <laughs> but these are also the, the soft girls, the luxe girls, even the clean girls to an extent. Like this is all, like you can start with fashion and then as you know, you're buying crystals and getting tarot cards and then all of a sudden the divine feminine shows up and they tell you you just need to bake cookies. It's, no. <laughs> no. Also, we talk about it, how it relies. They're both within us. It's just a matter of what well we, we get it from. You know, if you need to be more action driven and oriented, you would dip into your masculine energy. And if you needed to be more calm and soft, and gain wisdom you would be in your feminine energy so it all exists within us but again the gendering is what needs to be changed so you could say action energy you know receptive energy even it doesn't have to have a male or female or binary connotation to it at all so i don't know why we can't just lose the words <laughs> Um, because there, there are some things we had to have this movement, this goddess movement to get us to where we're at now, but we don't need to make it part of our foundation. Like I said, this, this moment, this, this minute in time got us to where we're at. It did move the needle a bit, but that doesn't mean we have to ascribe to the needle with our whole identity and our full chest as something that is completely infallible and true to its word no these are semantics these are just concepts these can all be changed so i don't accept that <laughs> i don't accept that as an excuse or an explanation sorry you're gonna have to do better than that also this is just rife with cultural appropriation again if nothing else stop culturally appropriating <laughs> religious aspects of other cultures and other parts of the world as your truth and belief system. It's evangelizing and it kind of reeks of neocolonialism to be fair. Luckily, we've just outgrown the original framework. That's what I'm going to take from this. Christians are always taking spiritual shit and applying it into their stale ass heteronormative society just like they built churches on old sacred sites. So them claiming this divine feminine label, I say we just let them have it because it'll be really funny if like something else starts taking off and then they co-opt it for themselves again. And it would just be so funny because you're basically copying pagan ideas <laughs> like Christians have always been doing. So. I'll add sources in the description. Um, I know I didn't quote a lot. It's a lot of it is from my experience, but also articles I've read. So I'll be linking those. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. I plan to do another one really, really soon. Um, it might be, it might be the capitalism one or the cultural appropriation. I'm not sure. But also comment if you have any ideas, also any insights, if you agree or not agree comment. We can talk. Thanks. Bye.